Welcome Tenno, death comes in a variety of shapes and sizes, but never has it been more beautiful than Saren. Specializing in withering down platoons of enemies at the time, she is nearly unmatched in mass killing potential. Now, when you hear all that, you'd expect her to be squishy, right? But you'd be wrong, she's actually one of the more tankier frames in the game, stat-wise anyway. Because, well, she needs it, due to the fact that all her damaging abilities are DOT, dot, short for damage over time, something you'll be hearing a lot of in this video, trust me. Her passive also works nicely into all of this, since it increases the duration of all status effects inflicted by 25%. Okay, now before I begin with the kit, you need to know that it looks a bit like this. Basically feels like a high school math lesson, I know. So I'll spare you the pain and first explain every skill shortly, pointing out the important bits, the interaction it has with previously mentioned skills, and at the end I will tell you some combos, tips and tricks, and how to use them at their maximum. Speaking of which, spores is the first skill in your kit. Sarin places visible spores on the body of an enemy that apply a small DOT along with a viral status proc. The spores can be popped by various damage sources like weapon shots or certain abilities, spreading the spores to all nearby enemies along with the viral proc. If a spore gets popped by a toxic damage source, it will also spread the toxic proc to nearby enemies as well. And also, the duration, damage and range can be increased with mods. Molt, Saren's next skill, allows her to shed her skin like a snake, creating a decoy that draws enemy fire. If the duration expires or the decoy is killed, it explodes, dealing toxic damage and applying a toxic status proc on all enemies in range. Due to the fact that it has no cast time or cast animation, it can be used to save your life acting like a small barrier. Spores can be cast on Molt, which allows the spores and viral proc to be spread alongside the toxic proc on all targets in range when Molt dies. The Augment Regenerative Molt gives Sarin 10 seconds of health regen after casting Molt as well, making it a very useful tool if you're finding yourself taking too much health damage. The duration, range and damage of Molt can be increased by mods as well. With Toxic Lash, Saren's third ability, she imbues her melee weapon with toxic damage, dealing increased damage and guaranteeing a toxic proc and a spore pop with every hit she makes. Though I'll talk more about this when we get into the combo section. Miasma is Saren's ultimate ability. Releasing a caustic mist around herself in a large area, Saren deals corrosive damage over time to all enemies inside stunning them briefly and also detonating Molt if it's within the blast area. Alone, the skill is not that great, however, given the fact that he deals 100% increased damage if the target has a viral proc on it, and another 100% increased damage if it has a toxic proc on it, and if Molt is detonated by it, it deals even more increased damage based on the percentage of HP lost by Molt, all of which should more than make up for the fact that it has lower base damage. Its range, damage and duration can also be changed via mods. The build I generally used is one based mostly on range and some duration rather than power strength, since it can still reliably erase mobs up to level 50 or so, which is good enough for me. But there's also one based on much more power strength if the situation demands it, but you will probably want to have a trinity with you to keep your energy up. Now let's see how to mix and match all of that into something useful. The quickest combo you'll want to do is the following. First, use Molt, then put a Spore on it and use Miasma. Because Miasma detonates Molt before doing the first instance of damage, which means all enemies will have both the Viral and Toxic proc, which will increase Miasma's damage considerably. A build that focuses more on power strength, which might have reduced power efficiency, can just put a Spore on an enemy, shoot it with a weapon that does toxic damage, to pop the spore and spread both the viral and toxic procs on other targets and then use Miasma. This works especially well with an Ignis. There's also something for those who enjoy melee play and it does quite a lot of damage. With a build focused on power strength and a weapon with a lot of range like Orthos with a reach or prime reach mod, using only spore and toxic lash will allow you to constantly respread the spores on groups of enemies dealing a lot of damage in the process. In the Conclave, however, well, there's no other way to put it really, she's kinda bad. Her energy costs are way too high to perform any sort of combos, and when players move as they do with the ranges she has, 
that all really becomes impossible. However, she has some uses. Spores is a rather easy to apply skill even when enemies are moving hectically all over the place, giving you access to free damage while you do other things. Or if a target is running away and you can't quite catch it, apply spores and most of the times it will finish it off. Molt also creates a bubble around it, which absorbs shots, but you can shoot outside of it, kinda like a frost bubble, which makes it a good mobile cover or maybe setting up a sniper's nest. Just watch out for weapons with punch through since they can still shoot you. Toxic Lash is really a straightforward melee buff, though it does bypass shields since it deals toxic damage, so use that to your advantage. And Miasma is downright useless. The range is so small you'll almost never catch anyone with it, and if you do, it almost never kills anyone. But I do believe DE will address her conclave needs eventually. So yeah, all in all, if you prefer the playstyle of Warlocks in other games, like debuffing enemies via procs or seeing dots flying everywhere, Saren may just be the Warframe for you. So that's all for now, see you guys next time!